Hi, traders. Welcome to the live webinar with FXDD. My name is Chris from Elite Currency. And today, the 24th of April, we're going to take a look at the live markets, of course, and uh, your dollar and other currency pairs and other instruments, in fact. But before we do that, we do need to explain this uh, risk warning, explaining the fact that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And uh, this webinar and later on video is for informational and educational purposes only. If you're looking to join the live webinars, uh, of course, check out these links. The top link is for trading live trading webinars and the bottom link is for live educational webinars. Uh, and of course, if you don't manage to catch them live, they're always uploaded to the FXDD YouTube channel. So subscribe there so you don't miss any uh, of these videos. Not only the live webinars are there, but also our video analysis from Nenet and myself are added there on a regular basis, Monday through Thursday, most mostly Monday through Thursday. All right. So check these links out, the FXDD YouTube channel as well. In the meantime, let's take a look at uh, the charts and what's going on in the market live right now. But of course, I need to share the charts there we go hopefully you will see them now good all right so what's going on at this moment well uh basically short summary bullish on the dollar yen at this moment bearish on the pound dollar and your dollar could break both ways i think it's 50 50 and uh you know it it kind of provides opportunities uh, in both directions all right so let's start with this dollar yen as you can see we have some buy positions open at this moment that's based on this bull flag uh, that we're looking at um this is uh, basically a chart pattern a continuation chart pattern as you can see and we're looking for a momentum breakout right we have already momentum here correction momentum correction so we are expecting that follow through to the upside and uh, we are expecting that bull flag to break to the upside. Now, of course, nothing is perfect. Nothing is 100% guarantee in trading. That is just the fact of life and the fact of matter that we have to deal with. So, of course, could this turn around and fall and, and fail as a bull flag? It's always, always possible. You never know. But typically, uh, the odds are in favor. There are bigger odds. The higher chance that price will move to the upside and reach the target. We have a target. At around 1250 as you can see out i can indicate where that level is precisely 112 just below 1250 in fact 11233 it's a modest target i do think it could push higher to 11250 11260 um so it depends on how aggressive you know you want to be with that targeting we have a conservative target i think uh stop loss as you can see we we personally have it uh, below the current bottom of the bull flag it's a it's a decent spot i think 111 uh 57 you you know one could argue that it could go below 111.50 let's put a fit from here to here and uh if you have it you know one could argue uh that a, a stop loss at 111.45 would be below the 50 fib so it depends on once again how aggressive or conservative you want to be as a trader but these are our ideas and our thoughts and you know just sharing our kind of logic behind uh, this we just had it below the bottom of the bull flag basically um once again one trade setup you never know if that's going to work out and uh, once again this is just for informational and educational purposes sharing our kind of thought process but typically yeah typically these patterns do break up to the upside the bull flag does break up often but not always and uh, we're looking for price to continue higher. Now, if it fails, I would say the setup should work this week. But if it doesn't happen this week and price just goes sideways, then, uh, you know, I would, at the end of the week, I think the setup is invalidated and it's good to reduce risk, close the trade, lock in some profit. Because if it takes this entire week and it still doesn't substantially move up, then it's taking too long and that's a sign of failure often of the trade and next week i think it therefore could reverse back to the downside because we got to keep in mind that although it, you know it looks like a good continuation pattern we do got a potential resistance spot right here from the previous top and if it doesn't if it's not able to break through that 
it could become a double top. So that is one warning we got to be careful of. And if it is, if it does become a double top next week, it could therefore re reverse or retrace maybe back into this zone right in here where I have 109, 110, 109, and it could be a bigger retracement. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the chat, by the way. Otherwise, um, I don't have much to add. A, a push above the 21 EMA high, by the way, a close above that could be another kind of confirmation that price is breaking to the upside, by the way. So, yeah, I just wanted to add that. Otherwise, uh, pound dollar, we are trading a short. We're in a short at this moment. It's not on this account, so you don't see it, uh, but uh, on a different account. But anyhow, uh, one, yeah, 2950-ish is the area, a little bit lower, I think. Uh, and um, price has gone, yeah, some 30, 40 pips in our way, I guess. Uh, a little bit of a wick on the four-hour candle at this moment. But what I do like, oh, well, let me use a new template. Hang on. What I do like about this downside is that we had a clear, or the pound dollar had a clear break below the 129.50 and the 130 support zone with a good candle from high to low, pretty decent size, close near the high as well, uh, near the low as well, sorry, indicating that the bears are in control. And uh, basically it looks like price is breaking this descending wedge to the downside, right? We had this pattern. So yesterday's candle, I think pretty much confirmed that. And uh, if you look at lower time frames, because I don't know if you follow our work or not, but I have mentioned this quite regularly in the past is that if you get a breakout on a high, a one time frame, a good rule of thumb is to look at a lower time frame. And uh, if you get a pattern there, so you get momentum on that lower time frame. And then if you get a pattern like this, we have momentum and then the pattern that often indicates that there is a good breakout and not a false break. Whereas if you get a good break with momentum, but then a close in reverse and it flies into the opposite direction, then that's often an indication of a false breakout. So with the pound dollar, we had momentum, but then sideways move. Often enough, that's a pretty good indication of a continuation. And we already had that continuation, right? Price pushed for a lower low. Now, whether we get a follow through, now we're getting a pullback. We got some bullish candles. Whether we get a follow through or not, we we'll have to see. I think that it might, if there is a retracement, I still think that the broken support zone at 129.50, 129.75 could act as resistance and that there could be a fair chance that price will continue to the downside from this zone. So even if it were to move up, even if it were to move higher, I think it's going to go into a resistance zone and potential bounce reversal area. Uh, and if it res respects the S1 and stays below the 21 EMA, then there could be an immediate downside. Okay. Targets, depends how conservative you want to be, 129, 128.50, even 127.50, right? Uh, could be levels to think about. And, um, you know, typically uh, going above the previous top, of course, works pretty well uh, as, um, as a place where you could have a technical stop loss. Um, so, yes, I like this downside potential continuation. This might take a few days, might even run into next week, um, you know, but ultimately I think it, there's a fair chance of bearish continuation after this breakout. Uh, Euro dollar, as I said, is, is, a, is a mixed picture in the sense that we do have a setup open to the downside at this moment, um, but there are also reasons to think it could be a bouncing spot. So, this account doesn't show the short, but we are in a, a short setup that is at break even from this particular zone right here, right here, because of the potential momentum, pullback continuation, A, B, C, strong bearish momentum, choppy correction, bounce at the 21 EMA, and re-break below the bear flag like this, right? Clear break below that. I don't know if you see the channel that well. Let me make that a little bit thicker.
there we go clear break below that bear flag all right and that was uh the reason we just missed our take profit though by three pips uh it is the trade is now our trade is the stop loss is placed that uh break even uh plus you know one pip below that and um, unfortunately enough we missed our target by a couple of pips so we have to see if it does move lower uh we will hit our target on uh the short if it moves up we'll have break even but maybe this buy will work out all right this is a trade from nenet uh we're, we're co-trading together this account and um so this is a, a counter reversal trade that um uh that Nenet has probably activated and executed now if you're following ECS live by any chance uh it is probably not a trade he shared on purpose because of the conflicting um direction that the previous signal already is running right which is short uh but there are good arguments to make for a reversal trade in the sense that price uh, made momentum here made a correction but didn't break this bottom momentum abc correction didn't break this bottom you know so there are fair arguments to make that it could uh, could bounce that support basically and we'll have to see if you know what direction the triangle breaks to is it a, a bullish break or is it a bearish break of this triangle pattern all right uh some wicks here on the four hour chart two wicks at this moment so yes his target though in any case his stop loss below this bottom is target at 112 44 ish uh other than that uh we can take a look at dollar swiss indeed uh, it's not something i look at regularly so i i might need some time for that but uh before we do that a quick look at here in new zealand it is one of the few that i think are interesting and um we have because of the fact that we have a break here of these fractals on the four hour chart and if you look price has moved away from the 144 ema one second which is this email let me re remove the other one for quite a bit so we're getting into a zone where we would expect price to move quicker the more price moves away from the 144 may the higher the chances that there will be momentum kicking into the market so uh yeah that's why you know there was i was looking for a break and a trade above this 168.40 now i think there could be a fair chance of a pullback and continuation uh, which is why i think the one hour chart could be interesting if there's some kind of a bull flag this is still a small correction so what i'm looking for i mean it in theory one could trade it there was already a wick at the 21 ema and at the previous uh, top and the r1 and the moving average um so yes more aggressive traders might you know consider that a, a bounce already uh more conservative approach would be however would be to wait for a bigger pattern that goes a little bit deeper into the 21 ema makes more of a bull flag more candles another four or five candles that go sideways and then a rebreak above the 21 EMA, right? So you really want the 21 EMA to switch back down, have a bearish angle, and then press to break above that 21 EMA again. That is uh, a more conservative approach. All right, uh, now we can move to the dollar Swissy. Now I have not looked at the dollar Swissy for a long time, just because of all this choppiness, and that has lasted more or less for three, four years now in the meantime, I guess. As you can see, there was pretty good movement on the Swiss before. Strong downside, huge rally, pretty good ABC and then an upside. Uh, then the Swiss intervention to, uh, I think that was here, to release the peg, if I remember correctly, on the Euro Swiss franc that did have its impact on the dollar Swiss franc too. But after that, it has just gone sideways uh and um well this month candle is showing dollar strength is showing a dollar breakout and is following the dollar index there's still some tops in here to consider and the long to moving average as well so i don't think that the dollar swiss is out of the woods as yet but 
yes pretty good breakout candle last week uh and um following through this week with a good momentum a lot of candles pushing away from the 21 may definitely good impulsive price action here and uh, likely to be a retracement for more upside so four hour is making that retracement and one hour is two so it depends on how big this retracement uh, is going to be but i wouldn't expect necessarily a big retracement on the dollar so we see at this moment uh, anything i would expect max this zone right in here very max it depends how you know 144 you may on this one hour chart into a supply demand zone could be the bouncing spot already but we're not even sure if it will get that deep it could it depends a little bit on how price responds to the weekly pivot point and the 21 you may does it use it as a bounce it could retrace deeper but eventually we'll expect that level to be a bouncing spot uh a pullback and uh, then a breakout above the 21 may something like that or if it decides to break above the 21 may that could be it abc wait for a pullback into the 21 may and look for a continuation that's what i would do at least I, as i said i really haven't looked at the swissy for long but with this breakout uh finally the dollar swissy might be back on the table might be a pair of or currency pair and instrument to consider again uh, but typically i would you know with normal circumstances either look for a bounce at the 144 you may or look for a break pullback continuation after breaking above the 20 minute 20 when you may there's definitely enough momentum i would say for for that and um for one more push higher then when we get that push higher uh we are running into a 10250 zone and um quarter level and 103 resistance area so that's a little bit the disadvantage of the one hour breakout is there's not much space um once it breaks so you know that's something to consider uh, it doesn't mean that it will stop necessarily right at 10250 it could extend to 10275 even 103 uh, but yeah that is a big resistance zone and could cause some pause it's actually a little bit higher there we go uh could cause some correction consolidation at that zone um, but there's a fair chance of a breakout as well right we got good momentum so yes fair chance of continuation all right that is yeah that's a bit about it what i wanted to share uh do you have any particular currency pairs in mind unfortunately there are a lot of uh, corrective price action movements i think this year so far um but eventually things loosen up i th i think and we'll have to see maybe may will be different uh, maybe this dollar break will liven you know things up a little bit on, uh, on from that front um i think a lot of pound uncertainty weighed in with the brexit on pound odd pound is in pound yen uh, even even pound dollar so with brexit a little bit out of the way until october at least i mean there, of course there are going to be always some brexit updates and brexit news and be aware of that and be careful of that but ultimately the deadline has been shifted to quite a while away from now so maybe things will you know have uh, show more volatility and price action aussie usd for instance was one of them good fall a lot of momentum here too expecting correction and downside there's a dollar cat there's a cad news event other but otherwise here too good breakout candle of course the interest rate decision uh, a few hours from now uh, may, means that it's better to wait and be careful but there's hope there's hope of a breakout there's hope of some volatility after that so maybe slowly but surely things are shifting again at, at this end of april and may might be a little bit more interesting um because look you can see here on this daily chart on pound new zealand right look at all these wicks look at all these small candles going sideways and even before that right look at that choppiness a lot of ranges 
difficult for reversal and uh, and trend traders in fact all right lots of wicks here you know not an easy environment to to trade but who knows maybe how new zealand although i haven't looked at it for for a few days now or or maybe even longer uh is showing a descending wedge and maybe today we get a breakout right so some breakouts have occurred some breakouts might be close uh and that could could lead to some interesting trades uh later this week next week next month i think All right of course I have to wait for the breakout still hasn't been confirmed but there is that potential that at the end of the day or later this week we might have such a candle in that case good momentum i'll be looking for pullbacks on lower time frames and follow throughs all right uh, otherwise we might take a look at bitcoin why not something else than uh, the forex market and um all right well we are getting a continuation there was a lot of momentum in here and the momentum broke above the 143 may strongly um so not surprisingly that price is showing a higher high and it's now getting close to a 61.8 fib which at around 5800 which is the previous which are the previous bottoms uh and the 61.8 fib golden ratio so it's pretty key resistance if it bounces there uh, still a chance that this is a pullback within the downtrend okay uh and there could be one more lower low maybe at 3000 2750 2500 maybe even 2000 right maybe even lower who knows but you know those are levels to think about where price could go and could fall to and that's where i would also expect a close and reverse and, and a bounce if it gets there if it breaks above this 5750 ish level 5800 it would be re-breaking above the previous bottoms right uh which didn't manage to stop price didn't we're not used in resistance as a resistance sorry so in that case uh price might be back in the uptrend there would be pretty good momentum in that case to the upside and if it breaks above 5800 we are probably looking at a wave one here wave two and this could be all part of a wave three in that case we might be seriously looking at a recontinuation of the previous uptrend of 2017 um and um you know my dad might be still a little bit early but yes there could be some good upside available finally uh what i would like to see is how it breaks and you know there would be good to see some kind of pattern after the break because that would be ideal, like a bull flag continuation pattern for continuation higher um, to perhaps what kind of targets could we think about? Well, uh, let's put a fit from here to here and 7,000, right? Uh, after that, nine. Uh, after that, maybe even 10 or 11 uh, as price climbs this ladder of, of fibs, basically. So uh, yeah, that, I mean, if you're holding bitcoin for long term in the upside direction then break of 5800 could be a positive interesting signal right that i mean in a sense signal uh confirmation that price is going back into that long-term direction slowly but surely still have to be careful but uh i think that continuation patterns and breaks would be leaning it likely to see more upside towards these fips all right folks well i guess that's it no other instruments have been mentioned i think that uh still waiting for some breakout candles major still looking the most interesting in my view at this point um gold might make a bounce at the weekly pivot point again as a as a bouncing spot that's another instrument that could look interesting for a bearish continuation at 1280 ish 1277 ish perhaps um but otherwise, I think still waiting for uh, for more pullbacks. And we had some good breakouts, still waiting for pullbacks on those. We're, we're waiting for new breakouts. Things could become a little bit more interesting, I think, uh, soon. All right. In any case, uh, check out, once again, FXDD YouTube channel for more videos. 
And uh, of course, check out those links I just mentioned at the very beginning uh, for the live trading webinars with FXDD. In any case, wish you good trading and see you soon. Cheers.